Hi folks, Dave the Honest Audiophile. This is the Truth Ears Hexa, and these are my Honest Audiophile impressions. The Truth Ears Hexa. These will set you back $80 from your bank account. They are a hybrid. They have three balanced armatures, one dynamic driver with a LCP or liquid crystal polymer diaphragm. They have 20 ohms of impedance and 120 decibels of sensitivity. The Hexa comes in this pretty standard box. You get some specs on the back, some artistic flair on the front. Removing the sleeve, you get a black box that says Hexa, a little bit of branding. And then you get a very slow opening box. You get some more artistic flair. And this is interesting. You open up your little box and you get instructions of how to create a stand so you can put your artistic flair on display if you want. And you also get a user manual. Put all that back here. Okay. Then you get a tray that has three different types of tips. You get foam tips and then you get small bore and medium or excuse me small bore and wide bore tips i used the wide bore tip we'll explain that here in a moment then you also get a pouch for carrying and it's a very soft case it's not going to really protect against hard drops or anything like that but it'll protect it if it's sitting in a bag or in your pocket and then you get the hexa themselves now the hexa are very nicely built they have this hard plastic shell a nice big long extended nozzle ear hooks that are well controlled does connect with two pin the cable is okay it's not bad for the price pretty standard fare does tangle up and twist just a little bit at times uh, when taking them out but once it's in use. I have no problems. Fit and comfort is very good. Put them in and they just disappear. I can wear these for hours upon hours on end. Had no issues whatsoever with day long listening sessions. Isolation of outside noises is also very good. We're probably somewhere in about the 60-65% of outside noises being blocked. So they'll work very well for office settings around the house, around the neighborhood, that type of thing. Louder environments, probably not quite as good, but they will do once the music starts. Overall, I find them to be very well built. They do have a slightly flat backside, so they may cause issues for fit for some people, but for me, I had no problems, especially since they had a very nice angle and a very nice long nozzle. I found that they... Uh, just snugged right in for me. Drivability, uh, they're actually very easy to drive. Had no problems whatsoever powering them with any of the gear that I have, whether it be dongles, daps, or desktop. I uh, did find that they uh, scaled very well with higher quality gear, and it, I actually preferred them on desktop. I rarely ever use IEMs at the desk, but I found that they sounded the best off of my desktop amplifier, the Drop THX AAA One Linear. I really enjoyed it off of that, but I did not mind them on any other gear as well. Some of the dongles that I really enjoyed it on were the Periodic Audio Rhodium and the Heides XO, the Heides S9 Pro, Hibby FC3, Hibby FC4, NextDrive Spectra X, and the Audio Engine DAC3. Daps that I use, Sony WM1A and the A105. It sounded fantastic on both of those. So overall, I like the build and the design, the fit, the seal, the comfort of the Hexa is very good. And uh, they're easy to drive. Before we get into the sonics of the Truth Ear Hexa, I would like to thank my supporters through patreon and youtube memberships thank you very much for taking a sacrifice out of your daily fund daily monthly funds to support a channel that you enjoy 
And so thank you very much. I know that these times are hard in the world financially. And so you taking a little bit out to give back to a channel that you enjoy is much appreciated. Thank you very much. Funds that are given to the channel are used to provide coffee to help wake me up and to help me to do reviews. Also, it provides uh, funds to be able to purchase gear to review, gear to use during reviews and comparisons, and also gear to use to review products and to produce the, to the review. So thank you very much for the funds. If you are interested in uh, supporting the channel, please check out the links down below for Patreon and for Patreon um, and YouTube memberships. <laughs> and also, if you are interested in one-time gifts, there's a link for that as well. So, the Truthier Hexa. How does it sound? The Truthier Hexa has a neutralish type of sound. Now, why do I say it has a neutralish sound? Because it is a little bit heavy-handed in the sub-bass and it is a little bit heavy handed in the upper mids and lower treble region. Other than that, it is pretty darn near close to neutral. Bass. The bass of the Hexa is a very detailed, resolving, and tonally correct bass. It does lack a bit in slam and punch. And even though it does have a little elevation in the sub bass, it's really doesn't do a whole lot of rumble grumble and growl it just kind of adds a slight bit of texture overall i find that the bass is very technical good it's just not a very emphatic powerful and uh, a, a very energetic bass it comes alive when called upon and it gives just enough to give you a little bit of of the bass but i wish i had more body a little bit more slam and a little bit more punch especially in the mid bass regions and i wish i had just a little bit more but overall tonality wise tone is very good timbre is excellent and detail retrieval and resolution is fantastic the mids the mids are a kind of linearish approach to then being a little bit upper mids elevated, but the upper mids are elevated just enough to be borderline without going over too much. And it adds a nice bit of air and space to things and a little bit of energy and sparkle. So the mids have, again, like the bass, a very uh, natural approach to the sound, very good tone and timbre and very detailed and resolving but they do lack just a little bit in body weight. And I wish that they had just a little bit more uh, oomph behind the notes. They, they just lack a little bit of, of body. There's not a lot of, of note weight and density to instruments and vocalists. You get all kinds of information. They're very detailed and they're very resolving and they have excellent tone and timbre. They just lack a little bit of oomph. Overall, the mids have slight uptick in the upper mids, but not enough to be unbalanced and, or to be uncohesive. The, the, it all plays together very well. It just moves things a little bit more emphatically up top and, and brings out some details and, and it, it adds just a little bit of sparkle and energy. But to my ears, it's not a, a an issue and there's not any issues with sibilance. It's a very well-controlled, very uh, engaging type of sound, but not excessive. And then the treble. The treble is accentuated and elevated in the lower mids, especially around 8K. But then after that, it extends well, but it's very well-controlled. And at, in my opinion, it's a little too soft and a little too chill. It's just a little bit too laid back and a little smooth and as it extends out. All the information is there. All of the, the airiness and the spaciousness is there, but it just lacks a little bit of energy up top. It's not boring, but at the same time, it's not really super engaging either. It has a more smooth approach and it's a little subtle in its presentation and a little bit soft. I wish that the, the treble had just a little bit more uh, sizzle up top. As far as tone and timbre, again, just like the mids and the bass, it's very good. 
except it lacks in note weight and body. And then detail retrieval and resolution again, very, very well done. So overall, the bass, the mids, and the treble, I like it. Tonality wise, it's very good. It's very accurate, it's very natural sounding. Timbre wise, it does a very good job. You can distinct um, tell distinctively between instruments and you can follow them along in the melodies. Unfortunately, the note weight and body and density just isn't quite there and it's a little bit thin sounding and a little bit on the lean side. Soundstage. Soundstage is average width. It does an, a decent job in the way that it presents a stage. It is at times a little bit compact. It does seem like at times it, it doesn't allow for things to decay out all the way. They'll kind of come to a wall and, and just kind of stop. They don't naturally decay all the way through. Depth is okay. It's not the best. And at times things can get a little bit muddled and a little bit jumbled, especially on busier tracks or super heavy, um, thicker tracks. It doesn't do as well cutting through and keeping things separated and spaced and, and deep. And then as far as layering, things for the most part are very cohesive and uh, meshed together. But at times on those busier tracks and a little bit more complex tracks, things will become a little bit more mashed and smashed together. And you'll get a little bit of one noteness, especially in the bass. Imaging is very good. It does a very good job of tracking things across the stage and it is a pinpoint accurate. You can really hone in and go, it's right there, it's right there, it's right there except for on those busier, more complex tracks as noted. So overall, I like the Hexa. I think the Hexa is very good, especially for its price point, and especially if you're looking for a more analytical uh, type of sound. If you're looking for something that's very technical and very detailed and very resolving, the Hexa does a very good job. If you're looking for something that is a little bit more natural, uh, note weight and body, and just an overall more natural sound, the Hexa does kind of lack that. How does it compare to a couple other IEMs in its price point? Well, first we have the Katori Dauntless. Now the Katori Dauntless has that note weight that I'm seeking. It has that body and that density and that overall presentation. And it sounds a little bit more natural and accurate, especially with instruments and vocalists. Also, it has a little bit more impact in the bass. It has a little bit more of that mid bass focus and it does a better job of making the bass come alive and be more energetic instead of being a little bit more kind of ho-hum like the Hexa is. And then the treble is a little bit more elevated on the Dauntless. It does have a slightly more um, tipped top end, but it is well controlled. And also the Dauntless is slightly more detailed and better resolving. Sound stage wise, the Dauntless is wider, deeper, and better layered and more accurate in its imaging. And then we have the Dunu Titan S. And the Dunu Titan S is mid forward. It is a little bit more forward in its presentation than the Hexa and the Dauntless. And the Titan S, just like the Dauntless, has better tone and timbre than the Hexa. It has a bigger, more lush body and it is more impactful in the bass, even though it is more mid bass focused. And then the treble has just a little bit more energy and sparkle and a little bit more balance than the Hexa. The Hexa is a little bit more laid back than the Titan S and the Dauntless. And I find that I actually lean towards the Dauntless and the Titan S than the Hexa. Overall, though, I like the Hexa, and I find that the Hexa is a very good value, as I said, especially if you're seeking a more analytical, detailed type of sound. I like the Hexa. This is a good IEM, and I do recommend it, but do keep in mind that it has that look, that thinner, leaner note weight, and so if you like a little bit thicker, more natural-sounding note, the Hexa may disappoint. It's been Dave, The Honest Audio File. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video. Speaking of next videos, somewhere on the screen, subscription links, notification bells. If you haven't already, check those off. Don't forget to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to the video. 
And also check out the links down below. There's all kinds of information down there, how you can contact the channel, follow the channel, support the channel, all that kind of stuff is down below. And then also down below, there's all kinds of information regarding recommended gear, music used during the reviews, uh, playlists, and all kinds of other things. So check out the links down below. And then finally, don't forget to enjoy the music and that honesty is the best policy.